Hello friends. In this lecture we shall discuss Basel 3. Friends, in the year 1974, there was a failure of Bank Herstatt and this resulted into loss to many banks and that prompted group of 10 countries called G10 countries to form Bank Basel Committee on Banking Supervision. In short, we call it BCBS. And this was under Bank for International Settlements located in Basel, Switzerland. So this is background of BCBS. This committee gave its recommendations on capital adequacy ratio on three occasions. First is called Basel 1. Recommendations were given in 1988 and these related to maintaining minimum capital with reference to credit risk weighted assets only. In India, these recommendations were implemented in 1993. Subsequently in 1996, market risk was also added for maintaining minimum capital. So initially, capital was required to be maintained for credit risk weighted assets only but in March in 1996 market risk was also added. Subsequently Basel 3 recommendations were given in the year 2006 and this revision was to improve the Basel 1 recommendations. Here Operational risk was introduced in addition to credit risk and market risk. So banks as per Basel 3, Basel 2 are required to maintain capital for credit risk, for market risk and also for operational risk. As regards implementation of Basel 2 recommendations in India, this was introduced in the year 2008. As regards Basel 3, it is known as a global regulatory framework for more resilient banks and banking system. So these recommendations were given in the year 2010. And this was a result of a decision which was taken in Pittsburgh summit by G20 countries to strengthen the regulatory system of banks and financial institution as a result of 2008 financial crisis. So in the year 2008 there was financial crisis world over and this led to recommendations of Basel III. What is objective of these recommendations. Objective is to improve banking systems ability to absorb shocks arising from financial and economic stress. So whenever there is financial stress, there is economic stress, banks are put to shocks. To enable banks to bear those shocks, to absorb those shocks, the recommendations of Basel 3 was were given. Implementation of these recommendations in India. Friends, these recommendations have been implemented in India beginning from 1st April 2013 and it is expected that these will be completed by 31st March 19. So this is implementation schedule of Basel 3 recommendations. Friend, Basel 3 is based on three important aspects, three important components called three pillars. So these three pillars include pillar 1, minimum capital standard. Banks are supposed to maintain 
a minimum capital so that will be determined by respective central bank of the country second pillar is supervisory review the monetary authority of the country or central bank will monitor will supervise whether the concerned banks are maintaining minimum capital prescribed by the central bank and third market will also have some sort of discipline some sort of supervision so market participants like shareholders like depositors like borrowers like government like regulator and general public so they comprise the market so they will also keep an eye over the banks concerned whether they are maintaining proper capital or not so three pillars include first one minimum capital standards second one supervisory review and third one market discipline now what is composition of regulatory capital regulatory ca capital means the capital which is prescribed by central bank of the country say reserve bank of india in india so this is the composition first is common equity tier 1 capital common equity tier 1 capital it will be calculated like this so cet1 divided by credit risk weighted assets plus market risk weighted assets plus operational risk weighted assets this mean this capital will be maintained for all the three risk second one eligible tier 1 capital tier 1 capital includes cet1 plus additional tier 1 so here the total amount eligible tier 1 capital so this will also be maintained for credit risk weighted assets market risk weighted assets and operational risk weighted assets eligible total capital now total capital will include tier 1 capital plus tier 2 capital so here we take total capital fund so total capital fund will also be covering all the three risks so this is composition of regulatory capital now we shall see the break up of the regulatory capital so first of all minimum common equity tier 1 capital ratio so this is in short called cet1 according to rbi in india this should be 5.5% of risk weighted assets but world over as per basel committee recommendation it should be minimum 4.5% minimum common equity tier 1 minimum additional tier 1 capital so this is maximum 1.5% of risk weighted assets as per rbi implementation in india and also as per recommendations of basel committee so total tier 1 capital ratio 1 plus 2 so total tier 1 capital ratio should be 7% in india as per rbi prescription but as per basel committee recommendation world over it should be at least 6% now tier 2 capital ratio tier 2 can be maximum 2% in both the cases and total minimum capital in india it should be 9% of risk weighted assets where recommendation of bcbs is 8% any bank having tier 1 additional tier 1 capital more than 1.5% can include that capital in tier 2 capital in addition to total capital adequacy ratio banks are supposed to maintain capital conservation buffer 
in short we call it CCB of 2.5% and this will be in the form of common equity tier 1 instruments. So the same type of capital which will be maintained for common equity tier 1, similar type of capital should be available for capital conservation buffer. Now we can say overall there will be total capital ratio plus CCB of 11.5% in India and 10.5% is the recommendation of BCBS. As regards CET1 plus CCB because nature of these two is the same. So nature of number 1 and number 6 it is the same. It should be 8% as per RBI and 7% as recommended by BCBS. So 5.5 plus 2.5 it should be 8%. So this is the components of regulatory capital. I am repeating regulatory capital will comprise tier 1 capital plus tier 2 capital. Tier 1 capital can be common equity tier 1 capital and additional tier 1 capital. Plus tier 2 capital it makes minimum total capital ratio. When we add capital conservation buffer also it becomes total capital ratio plus CCB. It should be this level. Well friends, we will continue this in the next lecture also. Thank you.